So I'm going to talk real quickly about the difference between flexibility and range of motion because this, these terms get thrown around a lot, and I think it can get confusing. For, I, I know it can get confusing for people. I've known, I've talked to people who were professional dancers, um, ballet, and similar things. I've talked, I've worked with a lot of very high quality um, soft tissue experts that work with a lot of high quality athletes, and this range of motion and flexibility thing gets really confusing. <clears throat> Range of motion is specific to velocity, okay? That's the first thing you have to understand. So if somebody is very flexible statically, that doesn't mean they'll be able to control the range of motion dynamically, okay? And conversely, somebody can have great range of motion dynamically, that doesn't mean that they need to have a lot of range of motion statically. I'm gonna use uh, baseball as an example because I've worked with a large number of baseball players. So if you ever see a still frame of a baseball pitcher, uh, you know, winding up for a pitch, their arm will be in a position that does not look natural. Um, so what happens when we do a sporting movement is the muscle lengthens, so does the connective tissue. That connective tissue stretches, storing elastic energy. This is called the stretch shortening cycle. And it uses that elastic energy to power whatever the sporting movement is. Where this gets confusing is people will see that still frame of that position and they think that that athlete needs the static ability to get in that position. So they'll get in the training room and they'll stretch them, the living daylights out of them. Uh, if you overstretch connective tissue, you take the elasticity out of it, it loses its power. So somebody who needs a lot of range of motion dynamically does not necessarily need a lot of range of motion statically. So wrapping that up, um, static range of motion and dynamic range of motion, they are different things they're not even necessarily related to each other. So don't just assume that because somebody's, that someone seems stiff or they're like inflexible when they're stretching, that they can do something very athletic when they're moving because they're, they're different. And if you're working with any kind of a client that seems like they need a lot of range of motion for whatever they're doing or whatever their interests are, that doesn't always mean they need to be able to stretch to an extreme. Um, kind of the bottom line here is being hypermobile is as bad as being really stiff. They cause different problems, but they're both problems. So you don't want a joint to become unstable. Once a joint becomes unstable, it, it, it's never the same. Um, so in that sense, like if somebody's stiff, it's pretty easy to correct. You just have to introduce the right type of things. But if someone develops instability in a joint, um, it's always going to be unstable. So just, that's basically it. So remember, Little things add up, it's true with donuts, it's true with weights. Get out there, be consistent, make good things happen.